Let's discuss cell phones a little bit. Like I said before, so many people have them, and they're all kept on our body. They're always on, it seems like. Uh, a lot of people have them right next to their bed, use them as alarms. Is there, is there safety risks? Absolutely. I mean, um, if everyone would read the fine print with any cellular phone, it's going to tell you that uh, you need to have it a centimeter or seven inch of an inch away from the body. In other words, the, the manufacturers don't want you to touch it. Uh, if, you know, if you read the fine print very clearly. Mm -hmm. And the problem is when it's on the body, you're getting radiation uh, because the cell phone could be looking for a signal. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, it's something that people need to be privy about because it's so simple. I mean, when I carry a cell phone on me, uh, I don't have one now, but I'll, I'll put it in a sport jacket. It's away from my body, and I put it in airplane mode. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it, in other words, I'm not being affected by it. The worst thing with a cell phone is when you're talking right here. You're holding it, and it's, it's, it's in your ear. Uh, it's in some very sensitive tissues, and those vibrations, those toxic frequencies, are not only going through the brain, but they're going all the way down to your toes because we're an, electri we're an electrical being. So when it comes to cellular phones, you need to be smart. I mean, look, we can't live without our cellular phones. I mean, let's face it, I can't live without a cellular phone. But when I use it, I'll put it on speakerphone, and I'll put it on a table, and I'll speak three feet away. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting like 1 20th of the radiation I'd be getting uh, when I'm holding it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very important that we use, when we use cellular phones to uh, get away in the, from the radiation. And the longer you distance yourself, the better it is. Do we know what the long-term dangers are from their use because I you know they weren't even popular when I was in school I didn't get one until I was probably 25 30 years old but now there's kids in elementary school that have them they're gonna have them their entire lives do we know what long-term use might lead to yes we do um, what we do know it takes about 20 to 30 years of heavy cellular phone use to develop tumors in the skull we, we do know that um, some of my neurosurgeon colleagues are telling me that we're gonna have an epidemic of, of brain cancer in the next decade. It takes a long time, but it takes a much shorter time to get thyroid dysfunction. Uh, for example, when the cordless phones first came out, and when I purchased one because I was a doctor on call all the time, I developed what we call Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is inflammation of the thyroid gland. And I didn't know about it back then, but when, when I was on those earlier cordless phones, I was on here, then I had thyroid dysfunction. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand why I would have inflammation of the thyroid. So we're seeing an epidemic of thyroid disease. We're seeing a lot of tinnitus. You know what tinnitus is? It's ringing in the ears, mm -hmm. which can lead to deafness. Oh, we're seeing macular degeneration. Uh, we're seeing salivary gland tumors. We're seeing more breast tumors. So we're seeing the effect of this, of this radiation. Uh, and, and basically, it takes time. But from a cardiovascular point of view, what I've discovered is that a simple cordless phone or a cellular phone can disturb heart rate variability, which is a very, very significant factor in the heart, and that can occur momentarily. That's why some people are so sensitive to this stuff. They develop palpitations, they get headache, they get dizziness, they get lightheadedness. That's what we call autonomic dysfunction, where the heart is being affected quickly, very, very fast. And um, again, there's research on this. Uh, school children, I, I belong to an organization to protect children from Wi-Fi in schools. And there's been horrendous situations in schools where children become sick, there's been sudden death reported in children. So if you have a vulnerable child, let's say with a congenital abnormality of the heart, nobody picks it up, and Wi-Fi can disturb heart rate variability like we know it can, uh, that can uh, cause the heart to go out of rhythm. So when it comes to brain tumors, decades. When it comes to heart, in the vulnerable person, it could be seconds or minutes. Mm -hmm. And then there's a wide range of tissues in between. The sensitive tissues would be thyroid, retina of the eye, salivary gland. So it depends, again, on the tissue in the body. It depends on the, the heat source of the phone. Some people will tell me, I hold the cell phone and my head gets hot, my ear is hot, my hand, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now you're putting in thermal energy in addition to the radio frequency, uh, which is uh, very disturbing mm -hmm. to our cells of the body. You mentioned vulnerable people that could be affected more by, by these frequencies. How do you know, especially if you have a child, that, that they might fit into that category as someone that's vulnerable to you these? You don't. You don't know if you, uh, if you have a vulnerable person. Uh, but here's the deal. Um, we're seeing ADD, ADHD. We're seeing 
autistic spectrum disorder that is so common. When I was born in 1946, I had maybe five vaccinations. There were maybe 50 million cars putting out emissions. Now today, when a child's growing up, they have all this computer stuff, the computerized age. They're being injected with maybe 45 vaccines. There's a gazillion cars putting out emissions and putting out toxins. We've got chemicals, we've got phthalates. I mean, the environment is very toxic. And it's no wonder why we have so, much, so many kids on a spectrum. I mean, back in the day when I was a kid, it was one in 10,000. Now it's one in 55 males, I think, and maybe one in 83 females. So we got to look at Wi-Fi and uh, electromagnetics uh, as a mechanism that opens up the blood-brain barrier. So if you do get a vaccination, and you go home to, a, let's say, a cordless phone, you're a, you're a little infant, or your mother's uh, carrying you on, on her belly, you know, in a little sling, and she's talking on a cordless phone, will those vaccinations go to the brain? Absolutely, because the, the, the Wi-Fi opens up the blood-brain barrier, which is a protective mechanism. So it's my belief that the reason why we have so many compromised children in the world, it's a combination of the environment, but also these unseen frequencies that we can't taste, smell, or feel, but they're hurting the human body. And the most vulnerable people are the neonate, neonates or the unborn. And uh, the younger you are, uh, the more susceptible you are to radiation. Now, they've done studies on this. They've taken a five-year-old and put a cell phone next to a five-year-old and measured images in the brain, and it travels all the way through the brain. 10-year-old is halfway through the brain. An adult, it's right in the ear area, right? And, but, uh, you know, that's why acoustic neuroma, for example, which is a, which is a tumor uh, of the auditory nerve of, in, the, in the ear, uh, is, is common. Well, it's not uncommon, but it occurs with uh, electromagnetics. Mm -hmm. But the older you are, the skull is formed. So younger children, and especially children, who, you know, who are playing with cell phones or talking at five years old, the radiation is going deep inside the brain. And that's why my neurological colleagues tell me that we're going to have a real problem in the next decade.